potential students, this is Dr. Masonic, and my students are here, if you wouldn't mind turning it around and just to know that they're real people. Can you do it? Don't trip over the... <laughs> We've never done this before, by the way. Hopefully the audio is good. Say hi, everybody. Hi. These are my, hi. These are my Honors 250 students, and we are doing digital storytelling, and we're, uh, half of us at least are old hats at this. And so today I thought rather than just sit at my desk and do a video for you about the seven elements that we would come together as a whole class and we could do it, it'd be more, more dynamic for you to watch than just sitting there for 10 minutes watching me collaborate away in front of the screen. So what we're going to do is talk about the seven elements over here, watch a couple videos and come back. I won't keep you for the whole class because who wants to see 50 minutes of me? These poor people are stuck. But um, we will go through the seven elements today. So does anybody remember what they are? Just shout them out. Seven elements. Of digital storytelling. Anybody? Uh, voice. Voice. Excellent. And voice is, can someone describe what voice means in terms of digital storytelling? Uh, like the pacing and the quality of the sound. Yeah, quality of sound. So the quality of the voice, like how loud, how clear, but also the pacing. You don't want the voice to be too loud or too quiet. How about two? Anybody? Emotion. Emotion. Excellent. And what do they mean by emotion? What is meant by that in terms of the Center for Digital Storytelling and the whole idea of uh, storytelling? Digital. Kind of like setting a mood for what you're talking about. Um, obviously, if it's like a happy story, you don't want to like create a mood that's sad or depressing or the opposite, you know, vice versa. Yeah, so the emotion in the story, which comes out not just in voice, but in the music, in the pictures that are used and so forth, should be appropriate to the story and set the mood. So like you said, if it's a happy story, the voice should be happy. If it's a sad story, the voice should be sad. How about three? Yes. Soundtrack. Soundtrack, excellent. And so how does soundtrack in, impact the kind of story that you're telling? Yeah. It pretty much feels like the same thing with voice. If it's a happy story, you want it to be more upbeat. Yes. If it's sad, you kind of want it to be more, like you said, it's depressing. But right, more somber. That emotion. So it should, again, be appropriate to the story being told. And also, what else is the really annoying or good thing about the soundtrack? Does anybody remember why sometimes soundtrack is terrible when it is too loud or too quiet? So we have to make sure that the sound of the soundtrack, it fits the video. So not too loud and not too quiet. So how about four? Economy. Economy. And what, is it, what do we mean by economy? Uh, not using too many pictures, using just enough uh, information and pictures to convey the idea that you're trying to get across. Right, so just enough info, including um, pictures, videos, etc. So you don't want to overwhelm people with and information, right? Uh, mm -hmm. Just in general from the script. And how about number five? What are we forgetting? Have a dramatic question. Yes, my favorite and most important, I think, is that dramatic question. What is a dramatic question anyway? Is it in the form of a question? Not necessarily. Right, not necessarily, but what does it do in terms of the um, story. What is its purpose? Does anybody remember that? Yeah, Lizzie. It gets your audience's attention. Yeah, so it grabs the attention of the audience. And what were you going to say? Pretty much, the, pretty much the same thing. It, uh, it gets their attention in a way that makes them want to focus more on the rest of the story and it kind of gives them a little bit of a, a teaser as to what they're about to uh, what they're about to watch. Yeah, and it creates a tension, yeah. right? It creates tension and it creates a question 
in the reader's mind. So I always use an example from my story about um, the ha my house burning down and that whole narrative. My first line was, I thought I'd lost everything. And it makes you wonder how, what, under what circumstances, until we get to the end. How about um, number six? What's another element? So we've covered voice, emotion, soundtrack, economy, dramatic question. We've got two more left. What are we missing? There needs to be a resolution. What? There needs to be like a resolution or a change. Yeah. That's more part of the structure of the digital story. But yes, I uh, yes, go ahead. Point of view. Point of view, right. What is point of view about in a digital story? What do we mean by that? Does anybody know? Yes? It's like who you're talking to, who, like your audience, and where you want to tell the story from. Like you could read it as like a journal entry or right. as just a narration. So it's about the audience and the storyteller. And we've had examples of this in our stories. Some of you have seen where someone did, um, like your story, and the guy was, I always forget his name. Edison, yeah. Thomas Edison, yeah. told the story of Cement City, right? Mm -hmm. And it was coming from his perspective, but a lot of times it's coming from the perspective of the student, of the group. And we're missing one more. Does anybody remember number seven? We've kind of talked about it in economy and the other features, but does anybody remember the last one starts with a P? Pacing. Pacing. Yes, and pacing is something, again, we've already kind of addressed, but pacing is about everything. The movement of images and voice and soundtrack and we know that when it comes to all of this the one key thing we can say is um, it is better to have just enough you don't want to have too much so more is less when it comes to this and less is more it's better to do it with less videos than it is to do it with too many. So this is the basic features. And if you haven't written these down, you should probably write them down just to remind yourself. I'm going to flip this over for a second because I also want to talk about, if I can, maybe it's locked. Maybe it's locked. I want to talk about that resolution. Sorry. Issue. Hey, I did that. It didn't hurt myself. Um, when it comes to digital storytelling, so we know that you start here, you've got that dramatic question. And then I will use myself as an example again. So my question was, I thought I'd lost everything. And it builds up to some kind of climax or crux of the story. And in my case, in that story, it was that, I mean, everything's gone. The house burned down, and I arrived on the scene to a burning house. And then, though, there is a resolution. I just don't leave people hanging and crying over here in the climax part and the sad part. But the resolution is... But there are stories left to tell. And I'm the only one who can tell them. So I think that this becomes, this is an easy process when we're talking about, I'm moving this way. I feel like I should be going in slow. <laughs> um, this is an easy process when we're talking about personal stories, but I think it gets harder when we're talking about the feature stories, which is what we're going to address today. So why don't we take a look at, I always bring up the old standby, um, a town called Denora, just because it's easy for me. I've seen it like 10,000 times. And it's easy for me to talk about it. And then we'll move on to stories from last semester and any stories that we want to watch. And hopefully Firefox is the one that works. 
is the browser that works in here. The air was black and relentless. Twenty-one fell victim to this hellish darkness. The very darkness we created. The nations watched as we trembled, powerless. We changed the world, though we were too late to save our own. The year 1948. The place, Denora, Pennsylvania. Home of the killer industrial smog. Thousands of articles captured our demise as painters recreated horrific scenes we could not forget. The authors, artists, and poets of the world created work so authentic, I would swear they stood on the same streets, consumed by the same darkness. Our story, preserved in ink, in oil, in pen, poem, painting, pencil, pastel, but now, we're a tale of a time no one remembers, in a town soon to be forgotten. If ever we disappear, we'll find peace between verses of poems and stories, displayed and preserved in museums, ink, and song. Our song, the song of a small town. There is a town called Denora. A town in the midst of a valley in Pennsylvania with smoking mills, railroad yards, steel foundries, and the big sink works. Inhabitants, 13,000. There is a town where grass is not green, where on surrounding hills farms are few, trying to live like their sheep, blackened by soot. And when it is time to sleep, when 13,000 turn out their lights, they can see, before they close their eyes, swirling smoke under the ceilings of their rooms, always. There is a town where they all sleep, where there is no one waking thought of the day that will be coming from October to November, 1948 called Friday in the town named Denora. And all will be sleeping while the fog descends and mixes with the steam of sink, smoke of the mills, the rail yards, the foundries, on the Friday that will be coming on time. Like death. And for none of the 19 who at noon on Friday suffocated already, Will restlessness dye their dreams the color of blood? Not a breath over their sleep, or in that of four hundred others, on whose lungs this Friday will feast. A Friday like a rabbit, plague-stricken dog, in a town where the grass is not green, which is named Denora. Inhabitants. Only 13,000. Okay, so let's talk about this piece. This, again, as you know, was made um, in 2013 by a couple of my students, and uh, it's and actually the 150 version of this class. And so if we talk about their dramatic question, did anyone catch it? How did, I know, it, 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 there was a lot to that story. So. If you had to guess and put it in your own words, what do you think their dramatic question is? What do you think? What are they trying to suspend in this story? I 
can tell you what Corinne says because I've heard this. They've got almost 4,000 hits on YouTube, probably 3,000 of <laughs> those are me. No, I've heard this a lot. But what she says is, um, there's a town called Denora. And people will ask in their heads, well, who cares? <laughs> Where is Denora? What is Denora? And why are you telling me this? So with that simple phrase, which isn't even a question, she is increasing the tension. She does that through a lot of things in here, though, too, right? Through the sound of her voice, through the music, through the images. And so, where though, where does the story build up to? What is the sort of crux? Mine was my burning house. And what do you think the the middle of the story that the serious uh, the climactic part of the story is? Yes. The smog descending and killing people. Yeah, so the actual event, the, the smog, the, the, the killing smog. Do we have a resolution in this story? And of course we do, but what what is the resolution? It's tough, right, with this? Because where does she end our story for us? Yes. Saying there's 13,000 people, but they were unknown. Yeah, they're unknown. And so the idea is that even, even as um, the story comes to the end, like these people died, the resolution is there is this town called Denora. Nobody knows where it is. People died in it in this horrific accident, and they're still unknown. So the resolution, I think, you're happy with the ending because it kind of ends, you know, in a satisfying way, I think. But also, you're unhappy with the story itself because people did die and they're still unknown, even at the end of that story. And so, what can we say about, let me flip this thing over again. Wow, twice in one day without hurting myself. Um, what can we say then about voice? Did she do pretty well with voice? Oh, yeah. Yes. Yeah. Corinne's voice. She is, do you know Corinne? Mm -hmm. Some of you might know her. She mm -hmm. is a uh, theater major, and you can tell and the quality of her voice, and the pacing was good. Um, how about emotion? Did her emotion fit with what was going on? Did the song fit with it? And by the way, does anybody remember where that song is from? I think it's from one of the Hobbit movies, but I can't remember, because I remember hearing it in a movie one day. But I, it's, I've heard it before, but I can't remember where it's from. Anyways, did the soundtrack work? It did, right? It was somber enough, but it also had high and low moments in it, and I think it worked very effectively at conveying the mood. This is a serious thing, and she wants us to know that. How about economy? Did they include enough information to, for you to understand what happened? Mm -hmm. Yes. You don't walk away from this knowing everything about the killer smog, but you want to know, if they have this in their historical society, I want to know more about it. Like, what happened? What happened after? By the way, because of what happened in Denora, the Clean Air Act started there, and clean air uh, policies were developed all across the world after Denora. So it had a big impact for a tiny little city. Um, dramatic question. Again, we talked a little bit about her dramatic question. There's a town called Denora that nobody's ever heard of, at least people not from around here, and she creates a lot of tension with that. What about point of view? Who is she telling this story from? Is it from somebody in Denora? No. It's not from a survivor, no. It is from a person outside the story who is telling the story of the town. And in fact, it's the story written by a German poet, Günther Kuhner. They found a poem that he had written in 1950-something. He was in Germany, and he actually compared what happened, and his family was in the concentration camps, and he compared what happened to in Denora with stuff that happened there. Like, he could see some of the parallels there. And then finally, pacing. Do you think they do a good job with images? They show appropriate number of images, not too many. They're lined up with the story, too, so you don't see a picture of, um, you know, happy people when she's talking about it killing the small killing people. So I think they did an excellent job, obviously. They get a nail on this project. But they do a good job hitting all seven elements, and they have that story, and they have the climax, and they have a resolution. So I think we're going to let uh, Professor Mitchell's class go. So if you want to stop recording.